Okay, uh, a while ago I did a uh, just a few tutorials on using QT4 Designer, um, which isn't my favorite thing to use, but I can understand that some people like uh, like it. I'm not saying it's bad. I just prefer typing out code myself, and I also prefer GTK over QT for most things, but really that's just a personal opinion, uh, GTK versus QT. Uh, but I do recommend writing out code if you really want to understand how things work rather than using a designer like QT4 Designer. But... If you just want to create something QT4 Designer, I guess I never went over this because I've got a few comments recently that um, uh, I never showed how to link a button to a function in your Python script. Um, so I'm going to go over that very basic thing today. So uh, make sure you have QT4 Designer installed and open it up. And also be sure that you watch um, the previous tutorials because I'm going to skip over some stuff that I went over in the first few tutorials. They should all be in a playlist. Hopefully I'll remember an annotation. If not, just check out my channel and go to playlist and look for QT4. I'm just going to create a widget window. It doesn't really matter at this point. That's just a little less code because it doesn't have things we don't need like the main window does. We'll create that. I'm just going to say button. I'm going to drag a push button over here and I'm going to create a label as well. I'll drag that over here. Now in... Uh, Previous tutorials, I told you you could hit F4 at this point and drag to uh, from one object to another. So when this button is clicked, what are we going to do to the text? We're going to clear it, which really I'm just creating to generate some code, and we're actually going to change what that button does here in a moment. Uh, next thing we can do, we're going to say save as, and I'm going to save it into a folder here. And I'm going to call it my UI, and it'll automatically give it an extension of .UI. Now, if we go back to my terminal screen here, and this should be the folder where I saved it, there is the file we just created. We can cat it out. Um, it's basically like an uh, X XML file. And uh, now we need to convert it to a Python script. And I showed you uh, using a tool called py um, uic4. We can then say the name of the script. Um, and we actually hear, now, depending on how you want to do this, you can either just say dash O for output and then give it the name of what Python script you want it to be. If that's going to be, if you want it to be a standalone, you're not going to have other scripts running that it's going to be imported into. We're going to give it the dash X option, which makes, gives it like basically a main function. So we're going to do that. And now we can cat out that file, my UI.py. And you can see the script here. It's relatively short, although it could be shorter if you wrote it out by hand. Um, <laughs> and uh, basically, it's this little section down here that that dash x creates. So whether you're going to be importing this script into a larger script or have it being standalone denotes whether you give it that dash x or not. Went over that in previous tutorials. So at this point, I can say change mod plus x and the name of our script to make it executable. And then dot slash name of our script, since it's in the folder we're in. And, oh, one more thing. Um, it doesn't give the shebang line here. So at this point, you could type Python in the name of the script. But really, you should put, use a shebang line, which uh, just makes your script a little more proper and a little more easy to use on most systems. And it's just telling it what interpreter to use. We're going to use uh, pound exclamation mark forward slash USR forward slash bin forward slash env for environment. We're going to say use the Python environment. That just tells your operating system that this is a script file and to use Python to interpret it. Now it's executable. We've added that line. Now we can say dot slash and the name of the file. And there is our GUI with our button and our label, and if I hit push button, it clears out, because that's what we set it to in Qt4 Designer. But now we're going to change the functionality of that button, and it's very simple to do. We're going to say, I'm using Vim as my text editor, use whatever text editor you prefer. I'm going to come in here, and um, right here, I am going to say, you can put it inside the class or outside the class, depending on what you're doing. I'm just going to put it outside the class, so it's a function that can easily be accessible by everything. And we're going to say, def my, so define a function called, I'm just going to call it my func. And hopefully you understand how Python works. So you understand functions. So I don't really have to explain this. And I'm just going to do something real simple. I'm going to say print hello 
world. So when this function is run, the terminal screen will print hello world. Um, but now we need to link our button to it. And if we come down here, you can see right here uh, is our push button object. Uh, and we're saying when it's clicked, what's it going to do? Well, in this click case, uh, let me shrink down the text here a little bit so it's all on one line. When the button is clicked, it is going to self-label clear. So basically, self would be the form itself, anything inside this class. It's clearing that label. Um, and at this point, that's not what we're going to do. We want it to actually run our my func function. Um, we'll save that. And if I typed everything right, we'll run the script again. Here is our form. And now, when I press this button, if I did everything right, we should get hello world print out in the terminal screen every time we click it. So that's it. At this point, that's all you need to know uh, for the most part. Um, if you understand Python, you're good to go. You can create functions for anything and link any button to them. I mean, I just did a print hello world, but you can import other modules. You can run other commands and other modules, and you can have it interact with the internet and other stuff and blah, blah, blah. Um, if you don't understand that, you need to learn a little bit more about Python because um, we're just linking that button to a uh, script, and uh, that confuses a lot of people. People try to compare Qt f Designer uh, or Glade to... Um, things like Visual Basic. Um, QT, QT4 and uh, GTK, for the most part, are just widgets. They're just the buttons, the text boxes, the labels, the windows themselves. They're not programming languages. Python or C++ are the programming languages you use those widgets in. So you have the designer to design the application, but you have to write it in whatever code that you already know. And the convenient thing about this, over Visual Basic, which is its own language, and you have to learn Visual Basic, if you already know Python, or you already know C++, or you already know a few other languages, you can use um, GTK or QT4 with the languages you already know. You just need to learn a little bit on how the widgets work, and then after that, you just write out the code like you normally would. Um, plus things like C++ and Python are cross-compatible with pretty much every operating system out there. Um, at least anyone that most people are going to be using other than really, really, really maybe advanced users. Well, C++ will be on everything. Python it even runs on Android now. Um, I guess you can't be running it on a... Well, I guess, it, I don't know, if you root up iPhone, maybe you can get Python running on there. I don't see why not. You can on a Apple desktop. Anyway... Uh, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something. I hope I didn't mumble too much. Uh, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And um, I encourage you to play around with QT4 Designer, but I also encourage you to write out the code yourself, um, at least just so that you know that you can do it, even if you end up using QT4 Designer. If you watch all the other videos in this playlist, I think the one right before this, or maybe one or two before this video, uh, I show you exactly why I don't like using designers like QT4 Designer, because it once you start getting a program of, uh, even a small program, you're triple or quadrupling uh, the amount of code you need for the same you know, program. Anyway, check out the playlist. And I hope that you have a great day.